my friend, my new friend, and yours, Jonathan Lash. So, what an auspicious day for commencing anything. <laughs> and commencing the chance to see what all of you do next, I just can't think of anything more exciting. The last time most of us were in this tent, the sound of chattering teeth almost drowned out the speeches. It was like castanets at a flamenco festival. Today, there's no howling wind. No howling wind, and unfortunately, no absolutely wonderful step dancer proving that it is possible to dance faster than flames while playing the fiddle. So it's been a great year. And I, I hope you will bear with me while I spend a little time thanking you and some others, because I feel such intense gratitude. I was saying to Dean Goodman as we were watching you file in, how do you keep yourself from being overwhelmed by the emotion? I am so proud of every one of you and so grateful to every one of you. I may lose it at some point in the next couple of minutes. Okay. <laughs> to you who are making the transition as Liza said, from Div 3 to Div Free, you may be glad, I'm sorry. You have taught me so much about Hampshire in my first year. It has been so much fun to work with you. You may be ready to move on, but I will miss you. Thank you for everything. There, there will always be pizza for you at 15 Metal Street. Okay, so to the families of this wonderful class, we told you last night we're grateful to you for trusting us with their education. We hope that you're almost as proud of them as we are. We thank you for all of, that you've done, for the sacrifices, for the support and above all for the love that's made this moment possible. To the families, thank you. Wow, this is a great, lively crowd. This is really fun. <laughs> and then there's the whole Hampshire family represented up here on stage, the inspired and inspiring faculty, the amazing and dedicated staff, the remarkable alumni, and the students who aren't graduating yet, who make this, who make this shared learning enterprise so endlessly exciting, unpredictable, rewarding, and new. I want to reiterate something I said a couple of weeks ago. Hampshire was created on the premise that if a school could shift the focus from teaching to learning, the results might be extraordinary. Well, here you are. You are extraordinary. Like so many at Hampshire, I'm here because of the students. And I got to tell you, after one year, I'm convinced that that was a wonderful choice. You are fabulous. At its best, Hampshire has been and will be a learning organization. I can't say that enough times. Unafraid of the difficult process of change. Unafraid of argument. Unafraid of the consequences of disagreement. Unafraid of mistakes. Unafraid of discovery and learning and challenge. We see change as a necessity and a moral obligation in a rapidly changing, unjust world. 
Al Gore seemed to strike a chord with many of you a few weeks ago when he called on you to occupy democracy. So, good. I am for it. You have found your way, you've found your way through the obstacle course of Hampshire's inquiry-based, learner-driven, discipline-integrating education. You've recruited and persuaded committees. You have designed curricula. You have imagined questions and wrestled with the maddening way that the search for answers only seems to deepen and broaden the questions. At this point, you can learn anything, invent what you need, build what you can imagine, you can be the change. You are ready for anything, so by all means, occupy democracy, occupy education, occupy commencement, <laughs> occupy your work, <laughs> occupy life. But can I ask you a favor? When you get there, for goodness sake, don't just sit around beating drums. Do something. <laughs> you, you above all know how to do this. You know how to ignore boundaries, ask questions when they're inconvenient, ignite enterprise with creativity, take on the future. It belongs to you. Don't be fearful of risks, but be excited by the opportunities. Don't be content with success, but driven by the world's needs. I, I have noticed that at Hampshire, we're very proud of critical thinking. And critical thinking seems to mean reading theory. <laughs> uh, I actually, it's probably because I don't come from an academic background, I actually have difficulty following that logic. But, but I know that, that speakers who come after me, Leanna or Jill, can probably explain it. But I want to urge that as you occupy this and that, trust your senses. The world is mired in ideologies and fundamentalisms. You're questioners and inquirers. Think critically, okay. But sometimes you can just trust your nose. If something stinks, it's probably rotten. <laughs> a, a caveat here. My beloved hound dog, Buddy, a dog who sees the world through his incredibly sensitive nose, recently learned an important lesson from a cobra. Uh, excuse me, a copperhead. <laughs> Cobra's a different continent. From a copperhead. The lesson, as you can probably guess, is do not explore venomous reptiles with your nose. Okay. <laughs> What? You think this is funny. You haven't been to Washington recently. The venomous reptiles are in control. So, there's some other senses that are gonna be really important. Rely on your sense of humor. Rely on your sense of the ridiculous. Rely on your sense of fairness and your sense of outrage. And above all, above all, please hang on to your sense of wonder. The world is beautiful. Life is a miracle. It is amazing that we can learn and understand and create. Okay, I'm sermonizing. It's, it's only because I admire you so much and have such high hopes for what you will do and be. I can't wait to see it. So I'll stop and end with a poem that I like. Some of you will remember that a uh, few months ago, former Vermont Poet Laureate David Budbill was here speaking on a panel on the arts and social change. He is, uh, if you met him, an irascible man with a sharp tongue, a quick wit, and an aversion to all sanctimony. He wrote a poem called Three Goals that I want to read to you. This is a bit deep. 
Well, it's worth thinking about. Okay, here's the poem. The first goal is to see the thing itself in and for itself, to see it simply and clearly for what it is. No symbolism, please. The second goal is to see each individual thing as unified, as one with all other 10,000 things. In this regard, a little wine helps a lot. <laughs> the third goal is to grasp the first and second goals, to see the universal and the particular simultaneously. Regarding this one, call me when you get it. <laughs> Thank you and good luck.